Teresa and I are back to talk about pharyngometry and some comments about the subjective feedback. And you recall in the clinical application, we began with the snore screener, uh, and it showed that Teresa's airway was more responsive to a vertical position rather than the horizontal. And then we used that to select the uh, mandibular positioning stim simulators to do some other um, positions and let me summarize those for you because we started with an end-to-end -end six vertical and on a scale of one to five where three is her natural airway below three is of course less and above three is an improvement and at E6 she got a four and it was comfortable at 2.6 she got a 5, and that was comfortable. At 3.6, her airway was a 5 and less comfortable. At 4.6, it went to a 4 again and also was less comfortable. And you'll notice that that's farther anterior. And then we went to a simulator that positioned her at 2 and 8 vertical. And she, was, she rated that as a 5 plus as well as being extremely comfortable. And then we went to a 3.8, and she liked that, and that was also comfortable. And finally, we tested with end-to-end -end 8, and that was not only uh, a 5, but it was extremely comfortable. So what we have selected are three mandibular position simulators that we're going to use here in a couple of moments to run through those and see what we get from the data standpoint. And so, Teresa, as you recall, when I hand you this, the number that is going to uh, position your jaw, which happens to be a two, is facing toward you. So when you're in the upper first notch, you're two millimeters forward. And go ahead and just position that. Okay, and would you just pinch your nose, please? And uh, here we go. Okay, now we're going to try a 2.8, here we go again, first notch on the top, 2 is facing you, we're in the third scan position, and here we go. Okay. And if you go up to the uh, right column, um, you're going to see the differences between the, um, and I'm going to go over and pick up uh, number one, and we're going to compare that with number two first. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that uh, the difference between the green and the uh, that sort of uh, purple. Um, if we move over to the column again, then you're going to see when you can compare both the minimum and the, uh, the maximum. Now we have the green baseline uh, that we're going to compare with that number two scan when she was in a 2-6 position. And if we move over to the right column, we're going to see both the minimum and the volume and you'll notice that the minimum has gone from the 1.68 up to about 1.79, which is a significant increase. And on the volume, you can see the difference between the green and the purple up there. So now, if we could move on to scan three. Now we're going to be looking at the difference on the 2.8, She's in the same horizontal position, two millimeters forward. She's two millimeters wider now. And if we move over to the right vertical column, we're going to see that we have a significant improvement there of about uh, 
16 and a half percent and up above uh, we have a 26 plus percent increase. So now let's proceed on to the fourth scan and in this case we're going to use the second or the middle notch so that she'll be end to end and eight millimeters open. So go ahead, Teresa. Okay, here we go. Okay, now let's compare that with the green of the first scan again. And you'll see that uh, now those numbers have changed. We've got a significant increase on both the minimum and also on the volume. So now we can select any one of those positions as our target position because we know they all produce a respectable increase in the airway and they're also comfortable. So the next in this process would be to select the the starting position which would be the bite registration and I think in Teresa's case because we're basically at end to end or two millimeters anterior that it would be very comfortable for her to start with an end to end six millimeter a simulator that we would attach the handles and the bite forks on and proceed to get our starting position for the titration process. Now let's review what we have just done here with the simulators. Um, we did three of these uh, based on what we found uh, from the um, subjective feedback and uh, let, let me say that uh, some of you Sharpies uh, watching this will have picked up on the fact that the numbers uh, on the saved screens that we have been testing are not what we have been testing with. In other words, the positions are different, and that's simply because we have to do the saving after we've done the tests. And so uh, very shortly hereafter, what I've got to say, there will be a single screen that will reflect what we've done today so that you can look over that and those different positions and uh, see what the differences were uh, visually. Uh, but in any case, to just review those positions, the 2-6 position gained what I would call just a bare minimum of an improvement. Uh, both the 2-8 and the E-8 were good and all were comfortable. And I selected the E-6 or the starting position for two reasons. First, her overjet is two millimeters, so when she's in end-to-end, -end, that's a very comfortable position. And secondly, I prefer to take a shorter vertical when I'm starting because I like the option to add to the pads rather than have to grind off. And when we get to the end of the adjustment process, we will use the vertical titration keys to test some alternative verticals increase and if we find any of those are going to do a better job then we can quickly take a bite registration using the selected titration key and the pad uh, addition will be processed the same way as the original plant so you can't even tell the difference and it's more more durable so I appreciate your attention it has been a pleasure speaking to you today and I hope that this system can do as much for your practice as it has for mine thank you